Now, let's proceed. Let's proceed with the with second quantization and and try to look exclusively on Bose-Einstein uh, condensation and try to use the the approach of second quantization to to obtain uh, the the Bose-Einstein condensation. Now this. Uh, Bose-Einstein condensation, uh, it's, it's basically a macroscopic quantum phenomenon uh, where at temperatures uh, maybe, maybe near, <coughs> near absolute zero, what we call as zero Kelvin, close to uh, zero Kelvin, uh, what we see uh, is that uh, a significant fraction of bosons uh, in, in a gas, they, they condense and uh, they condense into into the same quantum ground state, and uh, and forming a collective quantum state, and this phenomenon occurs due to indistinguishable uh, nature of uh, bosons and and their tendency to occupy the same state, to occupy the same quantum state. So, uh, uh, so, so this this uh, uh, this quantum state uh, is exclusively described by Bose-Einstein statistics. Now, in this uh, video, uh, I'll 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 go into this Bose-Einstein condensation uh, using second quantization, and and this is basically a, a very powerful uh, framework that that basically allows us to to handle systems with. With, with, with the particles uh, whose numbers are varying and it's crucial for understanding these many body uh, many body quantum systems so to start with uh, 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 before uh, discussing this uh, uh, Bose-Einstein uh, condensation in, in detail uh, if, if I go back to uh, it's always uh, it's always important to go back to uh, to to the basics of second quantization, and what we do in second quantization is uh, we we basically promote uh, the, uh, the 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 classical wave functions of quantum mechanics to to operators that act on on these quantum states uh, uh, as a whole as an entire system. Now, for bosons, uh, uh, we have the fundamental operators, and uh, we have the, uh, we can define them as, say, a k dagger. Uh, this is, uh, in general, we can call it as a creation operator, and uh, uh, and a k <coughs> as annihilation operator. Now, uh, consequently, uh, what they do, uh, the first one creates and it adds a particle to the system. The next one removes the particle from the system uh, in a state uh, K that has been put here. And we have the bosonic, uh, these, these bosonic operators, they follow the commutation relations. And uh, we better know them. If I go with K now, so this is AK and AK dagger this is del k so so this i should take as k dash to differentiate the two uh, k k dash and if we go with the same a k a k uh, they simply commute and a k dagger a k dagger this is also equal to uh, k dash i should put the k dash here to, to differentiate between the two. So you will have zero in this case. Now uh, the, the very important proposition here is the total number of particles uh, operator in the system is uh, uh, we have to we have to write down that uh, uh, that to have the total number of particle operator say that is n cap. So this gives us the the, the total number in terms of a k dagger and then a k so uh, we have the uh, we have the number of particles 
one number of particles operator here and uh, and this number of particles operator uh, operator is described in terms of the creation and annihilation operators now the energy of this kind of system uh, uh, is described by the Hamiltonian so if I write down the Hamiltonian for this system all I have to do is to multiply it with with the energy and then we have the states AK plus and AK as it's now this EI that we have uh, this EK it has to be K as well uh, this EK is over energy and what is that that is h cross square k square by 2m we have evaluated this many a times uh, so so we have uh, this uh, epsilon k uh, is is the energy of the particle uh, in in the quantum state that's labeled by this k and i should put a k here as well now using this formalism what we can do is we can now uh, discuss Bose-Einstein condensation and, and calculate basically the total number of particles in a condensate. So, so this is our starting position for, for the discussion of this Bose-Einstein uh, condensation. Now, now according to Bose-Einstein distribution, uh, we have the average number of bosons and this average number of bosons in a quantum state uh, uh, with energy EK, uh, with this energy in second quantization, the average number of the bosons uh, in the state K uh, is given by. So, so I should be uh, I should be looking for that. So uh, we have the number. So number is what it is AK dagger AK. All right. And this is equal to 1 by e to the power of epsilon k minus mu by kbt, then we have minus. So uh, we have some symbols. So this is our, uh, uh, what we call this as uh, uh, Bose-Einstein distribution. Uh, and we have uh, we have written down the average number of bosons in a, in a quantum state uh, uh, using second quantization here. Now, what is this mu? This mu is, as we know, it's called chemical potential. And Kb, uh, this is our Boltzmann constant. And we have T as the temperature of the system and then we are left with EK and EK is nothing but the energy of the state as we already know energy of the quantum state that we have been talking about here now this total number that we have here the total number of particles in the system is basically it's given by the sum of particles in the ground state uh, uh, in the ground state and uh, the number of particles in the excited state. So you can have two kinds of particles over there. One will be the number of particles that are in the ground state. The, the other part of the particles will be uh, that are in the excited state. So in doing so, if I assume that number as n, so this is my that uh, expectation of this uh, average number operator. So what is that? That is N0 plus N excited, I should call it, EX. Now this N0 uh, is uh, it's the number of the particles in the ground state. So number of particles, number of particles in ground state, ground state. So ground state, if, if I write it in terms of K, then this here K is equal to zero. And NEX is the number of particles in excited, uh, in excited state. So now, now talking about this number of particles in, in the ground state. Now let's go with this now. So 
for ground state what we have for ground state as I have written over here k is equal to 0 so if k is equal to 0 then I'll say ek is equal to 0 then the number of particles in the ground state which I have symbolized as n0 I can write down that as a0 dagger then a0 so what this number is equal to this is 1 by so where is my equation so for ground state this epsilon k is 0 if this is 0 so I'm left with e to the power of minus mu by kbt minus 1 so that's what I'm writing here so this is e to the power of minus mu by kbt minus 1 now let's look at this equation at some critical temperature so let's take that reference temperature into the into the consideration let me write it again so what I have I have this n0 is 1 by e to the power of minus mu by kbt minus 1 now at the critical temperature if I define this critical temperature as Tc this chemical potential that we have chemical potential what's that that's this mu this mu approaches to zero see see we have to understand it mathematically so if this mu approaches to zero we can see uh, at temperatures below this critical temperature a macroscopic number of the particles occupy the ground state now why they do do that because this n0 will be 1 by uh, so this is e to the power of minus 0 uh, so anything uh, yeah, e to the power of minus uh, uh, 0 so e to the power of any uh, 0 is uh, equal to 1 so this is 1 minus 1 so this is nothing but infinity so what does this suggest here it suggests is that large number of bosons condense they condensed into the ground state below some minimum temperature what we call as critical temperature so uh, uh, so these bosons condense into this ground state as the system approaches to this critical temperature and marking a transition to Bose-Einstein condensation now the another case is so this is for, for the ground state of Bose-Einstein condensation now let's take the same argument for the excited state so excited state population I should call it I should call it excited state population so here definitely this k is not equal to zero as it was zero for ground state now the number of the particles in each state is given by our Bose-Einstein distribution so let me write down that again so n e x so this is my number of particles in the excited state so that will be given by sigma k not equal to zero then one by e to the power of e k by k b t minus one now what's the argument here in second quantization this expression can be written in terms of creation and annihilation operators this whole expression that I'm talking about so we can write down this as n excited is Sigma K not equal to 0 a K dagger a K now for large systems this sum that we have here this sum can be approximated to an integral and this sum can be approximated to an integral over uh, over the momentum states so because k is not equal to zero here so we have momentum states here so using the density of states the total number of particles we can write down this in terms of the integral when we have a large number of particles in the system this equation can be approximated 
the right hand side of this equation can be approximated by an integral. So what's that? So n e x is, so this is v by 2 pi whole cube integral d 3 k then 1 by e to the power of okay e k what's that that is h cross square k square by 2 m k b t minus 1 all right so this is over uh, this is over the number of particles in the excited state where v is the volume uh, under consideration and the other symbols have their own meanings now we want to switch this uh, uh, this format to the spherical coordinates and in doing so uh, what we have uh, we can switch we have to switch uh, to the spherical coordinates and we will then introduce uh, x say I will take x and this x I will take as h cross square k square by 2m k b t now if this is the case if I differentiate it I'll have dx equal to 2h cross square k divide by 2m k b t I think this 2 and 2 will cancel so dx will be h cross square k by m k b t that should be the case so when we do that we can we can write down this uh, uh, this whole thing as n e x okay so v by 2 pi whole square it's there this is v by 2 pi whole uh, it's cube it's there okay then we will come up with with dx because here uh, here we we should have uh, we should have gone for that I mean yes okay that's fine so uh, here we have we will get all the numbers out what will come out we will use for uh, for here I must have dk okay for dk and for x uh, what I will have is I will have 2 out m out k b t out by h bar square whole raised power 3 by 2. Uh, a simple manipulation uh, using those arguments and converting it uh, and the limits will change from uh, the limit will move from uh, 0 to infinity and uh, here I'll come up with under root of x and dx divide by uh, for this argument I will have e to the power of x minus 1 this is as easy as anybody can do it and obtain this relation all you have to do is to use those uh, transformations so this integral uh, is known and we know its result so uh, the result of this integral is 0 to infinity under root of x dx by e to the power of x minus 1 its result is uh, uh, its result is uh, zeta 3 by 2 and this is Riemann zeta function this is Ry Riemann zeta function so the value of this integral can be uh, utilized in this equation so if I do that uh, I will have uh, I'll have a more simplified format for it and I would like to introduce uh, lambda t here and this lambda t is under root of uh, 2 pi h bar square by m k b t and this is what is called thermal de Broglie wavelength thermal de Broglie wavelength so when we do that when we utilize 
this lambda in it, what we get is we get n excited comes out to be v by lambda t cube zeta 3 by 2. And I, I told you that this uh, this is this is a z, this is Riemann zeta function. Now to move on from here, uh, at critical temperature. So if I say at t equal to T c, at critical temperature, the the particles in the excited state equals the total number of particles in the system. And uh, and, and using uh, the, the expression that we have over here, uh, we can write down n is equal to v by lambda. For t, I will use tc cube, then zeta 3 by 2. The argument is at t equal to tc, uh, what we have, the, the, the number of particles in the excited state simply equals to the total number of particles in the system and solving for the critical temperature here and when we solve for the critical temperature what we get is we get we get tc the critical temperature that's 2 pi h bar square by m k b times n by v zeta 3 by 2 whole 2 by 3. A crazy equation. Now this equation gives us the, the critical temperature uh, uh, in terms of the particle density and the mass of the bosons. So, uh, so if I approximate the two results, uh, uh, one was the number of particles in the ground state, the other one is the number of particles in the excited state. So I can write down from that equation, what was that? That was n is n0 plus n excited. And from here I can get n0. And what's that? That is n minus n excited. Now, this is calculated. This is n minus, this is v by, we have calculated it, v by, Lambda TC whole cube, lambda TC whole cube, zeta 3 by 2 is equal to n0. So from here, uh, we can have the condensate fraction. I mean, the ratio of particles in the ground state uh, uh, to the total number of the particles. So we can divide this equation by n. If we do that, what we'll get, we'll get the fraction. We'll get n0 by n is equal to n by n will give me 1 minus and then the whole thing you can you can approximate that whole thing into t by tc whole to the power of 3 by 2. Now here, at temperature, if my temperature is less than Tc, what happens is nearly all the particles re reside in the condensate. Because if T is less than Tc, uh, nearly all the particles will reside uh, in the condensate. While at T equal to TC. You can understand that argument that the argument that I gave that uh, 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 that at T equal to TC the this condensate ratio that you have this ratio comes out to be zero n zero by n is equal to zero. So, so this is how the things work here uh, for T less than TC and for T equal to TC. So uh, what we see here, if, if we try to see here, we see that 
the number of particles in the ground state is equal to zero. So all the particles uh, at t equal to tc must be in the excited state because n0 comes out to be zero at t is equal to tc. That could be the proper argument for this, uh, for this outcome. Now, even at absolute zero, now if we theoretically go back to absolute zero, there are some, uh, there, are, there are fluctuations, there are quantum fluctuations. I mean, at t equals zero k, we have quantum fluctuations deplete. They deplete the condensate due to interaction between the bosons. Now, these fluctuations that I'm talking about, they are especially significant. They are significant in low dimensional systems where they actually prevent the formation of some long range order. Now, talking about the implications uh, of the Bose-Einstein uh, condensation, uh, it, it has its applications. Uh, it, it's true in it's true in 3D systems and, and condensation occurs, it occurs at less than Tc. And in 2D systems, if we have 2D systems, uh, there, there is long range order is destroyed. There is no order maintained in 2D systems and that's due to so long range order is destroyed and why is that destroyed that's destroyed by the phase fluctuations that i was talking about the phase fluctuations and leading to to uh, leading to bkt uh, bkt transitions and if we extend the same argument to to one dimensional systems, there are strong quantum fluctuations. And these strong quantum fluctuations, they prevent true condensation. But a quasi-condensate may be formed. So with this, I would like to, I would like to end this, uh, uh, this, uh, this video. Uh, which was uh, basically the motivation behind uh, discussing uh, the, uh, the the bosine condensate was to actually inculcate uh, some of the arguments of the second quantization uh, in discussing out this Bose-Einstein condensation. So to conclude this, uh, uh, what we have explored, we have explored the Bose-Einstein condensation and uh, through, through a formalism of second quantization, I, I should say that, and 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 uh, and looked for some key results like that of uh, critical temperature, condensate fraction, and the number of particles uh, in condensate. Now, second quantization provides uh, a natural framework uh, for for understanding many body quantum systems and uh, certainly uh, putting us at a task to express the particles in terms of uh, uh, creation and annihilation operators and number operators as well. Now, Bose-Einstein condensation, uh, what it does basically, it represents the remarkable uh, emergence of quantum coherence uh, on a macroscopic scale and, and shedding some kind of light on quantum effects in many body uh, physics and influencing modern studies on uh, on superfluidity, ultra-cold gases, and quantum information.